No. Don't go in there. The murderer just went in. I can't handle this. Even though I know it's not real, watching a horror movie really makes my skin crawl as if it were actually happening to me. I'm Shannon, and I'm a neuroscience PhD candidate. And this is your brain on horror. Horror movies are so effective because on a subconscious level, my brain thinks they're actually trying to murder me. You heard that right. There's a reason why we literally jump out of our seats during a sufficiently scary scene. Horror movies activate my brain's <laughs> fight or flight response. It sounds the alarm to my body, first activating the hypothalamus, which tells my adrenal gland to inject me with a big boost of adrenaline. The hypothalamus also activates the pituitary gland, which signals to the adrenal gland to release cortisol, a hormone which keeps me alert and ready for action well after the initial jolt of adrenaline dissipates. Did you hear that? Speaking of hearing, the music used in a horror film can often be the scariest part. Screechy, non-linear noises that build to a crescendo sound enough like a baby's cry to activate the same hardwired response pathway that a child's scream would. Further, horror music can create an unsettling feeling for the audience using the combination of different notes. This note and this note, while on their own sound fine, when played together, create a tritone. The lack of resolution this sound creates is unsettling and makes me feel like something is wrong. Hearing tritones causes less smooth firing patterns in the auditory cortex. Screechy violins and discordant notes work together to make my brain uneasy and alert. <laughs> Screaming isn't just for babies, though. It also serves as a way to convey dangers to a social group. Adult screams work largely in the same way as baby screams, in that they induce fear to anyone who's listening, and that includes the screamer. That's right, screaming can work in a sort of feedback loop, heightening my awareness and allowing me to better respond to any potential dangers. <laughs> Ever wonder why some people love horror movies but other people can't handle them, even a little bit? Well, this may be due in part to genetics, specifically polymorphisms in the COMT gene. Researchers find that individuals with differences in the COMT gene actually startle faster and calm down slower when viewing unsettling images, suggesting that these individuals are actually more affected by horror films. When subjects were placed in fMRI machines and asked to watch either scary or non-scary movies, their brains displayed significantly more activity in multiple cortical regions during movies that contained tension and horror. So why do we watch horror movies at all? And make no mistake, we do watch horror movies. A lot. One of the reasons may be linked to endorphins, the body's natural painkillers. Activation of the fight or flight response leads to the release of these mood-altering hormones, triggering happy and positive feelings. This response may lead the viewer to seek out the sensation, again and again. <laughs> Another possible reason for loving horror films is the arousal transfer theory. This theory, this theory suggests that the negative emotions we feel surrounding a scary situation can actually intensify the positive feelings we feel when the character makes it out alive. It's also theorized that watching scary movies allows us to feel the thrill of anxiety and terror in a safe environment, potentially helping us cope in a real-life scary situation. Whether you're ready for it or not, horror movies can take your brain on an emotional roller coaster. A lot of people will gladly pay to feel like there's an axe murderer behind them without one actually being there. And you can't put a price on that. See, I didn't spill any that time. <laughs> <laughs>